In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up an environment to do TensorFlow development utilizing Keras. More specifically, we're going to do our development in the Jupyter Notebook. You could always develop um, with TensorFlow using the command line or using a Python script, but one of the really useful features of the Jupyter Notebook is that it allows you to visualize your data as you're working with it so you can create graphs you can create histograms and plots and actually see visually what your data looks like and it's another way to confirm that your data is actually representative of what you expect so the way we're going to do that is we're going to download and run a docker image this is an image that we offer publicly it's called TensorFlow Keras Jupiter because those are the three items that are installed on this image. So what this command does here is it will download the image and it will run it in the background and it's going to start the Jupyter Notebook service, which is a server, and it's gonna expose it to this port here. So when we run this command, it's going to download the image, it's going to set up the Jupyter Notebook, and it's just going to spit out a URL that we can just paste into our browser and begin our development. So it really should be pretty streamlined. So I'm just popping over to a terminal here, and I'm literally going to paste in that same exact command. The expectation here is that you do have Docker installed. If you don't, you're going to want to go, go ahead and do that. So you can see kind of what happened here. We downloaded the layers representing the Docker image. Um, we stood up the container of that image and that started the Jupyter Notebook. And the Jupyter Notebook returns a URL here where we can interface with that server. So we just leave that running in the background and that's gonna kind of be a a log and a monitor of our activity on the server but we can just hop back over into our browser here and we should be able to access that server just by pasting that URL in there that looks good so this is Jupyter this is where you can do your data science development tensorflow is already installed so you can call it directly and Keras is already installed so you can also import those dependencies as well. You're going to get a couple introductory scripts here. This is called Hello TensorFlow. Gives you the basics of creating tensors and, and, and manipulating your data. But what we also give you here, here as this fourth, fourth item is an example of Keras. So Keras is a framework on top of TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the driver which could be replaced with Theano or um, another another uh, machine learning framework. Um, but Keras is a way for us to kind of e more easily interface with, um, with the TensorFlow uh, library. So you can see we're importing Keras here. We're importing submodules, the models and the layers. And in this example here, we're just defining some data, which um, are strictly data points in a 2D space. And those data points are either classified as a zero or as a one, and that just has to do with where they fall in that 2D space. So we can see we, we define our data. We um, move it into the arrays that we need. We begin to define how our model is going to work. This is, you know, batch size, the, the number of epochs, and a couple other parameters. This is how you set up a model with Keras. You add the layers um, line by line, just like that. And we are going to fit the model to the data. And then we're going to run some we're going to run the training and then we're also going to run a number of predictions to kind of verify the, um, the accuracy and integrity of the model. So what we can do is we can just go right ahead and run this. So it signals here that we're using the TensorFlow as the back end, so that's cool. 
it spits out the parameters of the model. It, it presumably ran the training already, and you can see the loss here is at 1%. The accuracy is at 90%. And when we run some predictions here, we get, we get some outputs. So this is what the original data looked like. It just if it was, if it was, um, if the data point fell below 10, 10 uh, within the 2D space, it was classified as a zero. Otherwise, it was classified as a one. And then we ran the same thing as some training data, and you can see here, it does a pretty good job modeling the true data. Um, we could increase the, we could play around with the parameters to to optimize this further. You can see it's not perfect here. Um, it would probably classify, um, you know, 8.8 eight as 1, and it really should be 0, so that's not perfect. Um, and you can see the errors are right around this space here, too. But that's a Keras model. It's pretty straightforward. And you can, from there, you know, start, start playing around with the parameters. So, you know, if I want to double the epoch size and, you know, reduce the dropout rate, you know, I can immediately run that and get a different set of output given those new parameters in the Keras model. So you can see here we actually, by doing that, we, we reduced our loss by 5%. We increased our accuracy by 5%. And you can see the model's getting a little bit better, less error. So you could play around with it quite a bit. You could generate more training data. You could fine tune the parameters. But this is a really quick and easy way to get started with Keras. And you don't have to worry about work, dealing with any of the dependencies for your environment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and the Docker image is publicly available. It'll be in the description. So feel free to pull that and happy developing.